your block i'm at the famous yes the famous shay j restaurant and bar on ocean avenue in santa monica and i'm holding a peanut now this may not be the peanut that went to the moon but we'll find out i'm with anita fiandella and she is the daughter of the owner of shay j and mike anderson and mike runs shay j and the two of them together form the duel of the dynamic shay j restaurant Hi, Anita. It's good to see you once again. Tell me a little bit about your father's legacy and how this restaurant opened. It's pretty marvelous. It's my dad worked at Sinbad's on the pier for many years, and people wanted him to say, Hey, Jay, why don't you open up your own place? So one night after a hard night of partying, he would always come to the Dawn Cafe. The nurses hang over and have eggs and bacon. The man who owned the restaurant, Sam, is my dad was going, oh, you know, if you ever want to give it up, you know, let me know. So he came in here one morning and Sam said, hey, Jay, I've had it. A buck, it's yours. And dad thought a minute. He goes, well, you know, here's the dollar. They ported up the windows, got the sale is from a square rigger in a restaurant in Redondo Beach. He put it together for $5,000. Really? Yes. And wait a minute, he bought, the, he was given this for a dollar? The lease. There was a year and a half left on the lease, so he bought the lease for a buck. And then put it all together with backings. One of the magic things of Shay J's is yesterday I was here at the bar, and the man over there gave us a card from the Don Motel. And he was actually in here when it was the Don Cafe, because his father built it, or his uncle. So to me, that's the magic of Shay J's. It was repurposed. It was a diner for years. Yes, it was uh, just a diner. It was built, I think, in 1949. Dad took it over in early 59. So now your father, I know, was a hot air balloonist. He was an actor. Mm -hmm. He was someone who spread the lore of Shea Jays. My dad, um, you know, kind of was amazing. He could make anybody feel comfortable. He could, you know, make them tell their life story. And he always made you feel that... He was listening. And I know we're in legendary table 10 right now, which is the cool table. Mm -hmm. One of the funniest nights I've ever had, and Jake came over and sat down for a while, mm -hmm. was with a couple of my actors just trading stories mm -hmm. and jokes, and they did this for three hours. It was fabulous. Yeah. So something about Shea J makes everyone feel comfortable. In um, the family safety deposit box, I do have the peanut that went to the moon. Wait, 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 wait. So I know I've heard the story about a peanut going to the moon. Who is the astronaut? How did a peanut get to the moon? Due to Hughes aircraft being nearby, and the astronauts would come out and here in the beach area, and um, they were all friends of, of Dad's, and they all came in here, and they all liked, you know, to sit at the bar, and, and it was a regular stop with theirs. And Alan Shepard, who's a friend of my dad's, and one night he came in, and he goes, hey, Jay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the moon, and um, I'm going to bring a golf club and a ball to the moon. And Dad said, well, why don't you take one of my peanuts? When they got back a couple months later, all of a sudden Alan calls my dad and goes, hey, Jay, you know that peanut you want me to take to the moon? Well, I have it. And they, and they photographed the exchange of the peanut between my dad and, and my grandmother, Alice. After the 1969 landing on the moon, Shay J is the only place to end up with a moon peanut. Yes, and the original and one and only astronaut. Oh, oh, oh I yes, like that. Yes. What happens to the peanut later on? Well, my dad would show the peanut to a lot of people, and Steve McQueen, took it, grabbed it out of his hand, and popped it into his mouth. And my dad was going, no, 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 don't do that, Steve. It's radioactive. Then Steve spit it back out. And I understand that same afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, uh, actors who starred in a lot of musicals was here for that unveiling of the peanut as well. Yes, um, the photo assignment sheet that they put out, and which I have is a little yellow card, because Alan Shepard is going to be presenting the peanut that he brought to the moon, and at the bottom it says, and Julie Andrews will be there. And I understand that Julie Andrews was here for her birthday a few months ago. And this is what I've heard, and she said that's where she wanted it to be. You know, I've heard the stories about Robert Redford when he was filming across the street at the pier, mm -hmm. seeing out back and having dinner. But tell me some of the other stories. Oh, 
schools. Lee Marvin was a very good friend of my dad's, and I um, mean, he rode in here on a motorcycle. He'd come in with these beautiful women all dressed up at night, and you know, very debonair and and um, gentlemanly. And then he'd be here on the weekends in his cutoffs and had a. Um, a Navy hat with, with drawings on it, and I, which really impressed me as, as a little girl. I had a, a pet duck, with a pet duckling, and Lee Marvin shared his Bloody Mary on the bar with my, my duck. Now, my understanding has always been uh -huh. that the Academy Award party for Lee Marvin's uh, Cat Baloo uh -huh. was held here. The Oscars were here at the Civic. That the next day, Lee Marvin called and said, did I leave something at the restaurant? It was his Oscar. He had been drinking, partying, and having fun, and realized the next afternoon that, wait a minute, I'm missing something. That's the stories I've heard. Why has this restaurant lasted? I know this restaurant is now a landmark in Santa Monica, but it was in doubt for a while. And tell me, what is the importance of this restaurant to the residents in Santa Monica and the greater community. A very important, integral part of the warp and weave of Santa Monica and California beach towns. You walk in the door now, it is just like it was, you know, 1959 and 1960. We had beatniks, you know, talking about life in general in the booths, and now, you know, we have millennials and beyond, generation after generation that walk through this door, and I really feel I'm back in Santa Monica of my youth. There are so many great pictures here at Shea J on the walls, and I, we're focusing in on one right now. Tell me about this. Uh, this is my dad, I'm Jay, and my grandmother, Alice, both with their arms in the air, and this is on my dad's Malibu Maiden which was off the, the pier because we had a marina there and this is a Malibu Maiden and I actually still have the life ring from it. We're here for the anniversary of Shay J's at dinner and a, a lady came next to me and I, she tapped me on the shoulder and she goes, you're Jay's daughter and I said yes. And she is the woman sitting to the right of the elephant and she's as beautiful as she was in the picture now. That's fantastic and that picture was from the opening day at Shay J. Yes, it was. I understand there was a famous document that hastened the end of the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. and it was exchanged, probably, mm -hmm. in this booth. Tell me about that. And, you know, there are a lot of people from Rand Corporation sat back here. A lot of papers were gone over. The Pentagon Papers, Daniel Ellsberg may have exchanged the papers in this booth right here. That is part of the story. So this table could talk. It would tell a whole lot of stories that um, probably our lips should be sealed on them. So we had the curtain that came down, and there was uh, curtains on the door, which my grandmother Alice took down in short order because um, things could be happening in here that, that shouldn't. She was Irish Catholic, and these are her pearls. So I'm, I'm channeling my, my, my grandma, Alice. My father started, and she came to, to help and was really the, um, the, the muscle behind Shea Jays. It didn't matter who you were. You could sit back here, and I think that's one of the magic parts of, of Table 10. I'm, I'm sitting right here where Liz Taylor sat. didn't matter who you were or who you were sitting next to. You always had to give them privacy and respect. With the no photographs and no autographs policy, I, I think we still have that here. So we're in the secret back room. Tell us about this room. This was my room, my apartment, when I was here in, in the late 60s. So this back part mm -hmm. of the restaurant was the motel. It was also the Don Motel. It was here in L shape and then the Don Motel there which has been torn down as the back has. And you used to live in this yes, apartment? this was my apartment. That was a kitchenette and um, my grandmother Alice would be out there sweeping. All the young aspiring actors from the East Coast would come out and they would stay here and so it was all filled with all these young men and some actresses and Alice would be out there at five in the morning you know sweeping the parking lot to see who came out of what room. So this is kind of the the private back room. Many you know aspiring writers and actors and that to rewrite scripts or sit down and hash things out. Quentin Tarantino um, I know was back here with a uh, read-through for his Jackie Brown. He had everybody in here. And, and I understand that Goodwill Hunting, some of the rewrites were done here late at night. And that's what I've, I've heard. Um, I've, I've seen the napkin where, where there was a, a rewrite of The Wild Bunch by Sam Peckinpah. 
you know, for my company, we've had our St. Patrick's Day celebrations in here at lunch in this back room a couple of different years. Now, behind us on the wall, I see a poster from this Amazon show, Goliath. And it's interesting that last night, the Hollywood Athletic Club, I walk into the bar on the second floor of the Athletic Club, and it's, it's uh, been made over for two weeks by Amazon. And there I am, and I'm on the set of Shea J. Well, that's wonderful because they were able to recreate that, you know, on the set. The primary vehicle for Goliath is Shea J. And I know they filmed the pilot here. Why was Shea J picked to be the home of Goliath and Billy Bob Thornton? That Michelle Pfeiffer came in here for many years when she was very young and before she was a famous actress, she knew my dad and had a special place in my dad's heart. And her and David Kelly collided at Shea J. They had their first date here. They have a very special place in the you know, Shea J history. And David would always wanted to have the opportunity to use Shea J. So it just widened the, the, the history and the mystery and the wonder of Shea J's. You know, the young man from New Zealand that was talking to his friends. And I always call from New Zealand and make sure to make a reservation. This landmark restaurant and bar in Santa Monica mm -hmm is important to the fabric and thread of this community. I'm so glad. I'm very proud of it. My father and my grandmother and, you know, Michael and his family and everybody here in Santa Monica, when they all stepped up for the landmark, mm -hmm. uh, touched my heart. I spent some time with your father, and your father came into my office, and, and I came into his office, uh -huh. Shay J. You know, your father was a wonderful, beloved character. Yes, I do know that. Go back for a minute to your grandmother, because Alice is a pivotal part of this story. Went back in her mid-50s to go to college and was actually homecoming queen in the college she went to back in Connecticut. And then she got her degree in special ed, but Dad needed her out here to, to help out a little bit. And she came here and never left. She was tough. She, she was tough. She was tough. She was a wonderful woman. Unfortunately, she passed away in front of us on Ocean Avenue. Yes, it was a very, very terrible moment. Um, it was, she was hitting a crosswalk. She was 89 years old, right before she turned 90, coming back to Shea J's to help out in the morning. Mike, I see you all the time. You've been involved in this restaurant and bar for how long? About 38 years. Your life Pretty has much. been here. Pretty much, yep. It's a great place and it has soul. It's just a wonderful, wonderful place. It's a big part of my life. Food's good, but it's the people who come in and they feel at home. It's this restaurant and bar, though, is a legend. The people come in and I hear a new story every week. When the city was talking about landmarking this, the city manager and other people at that time talked about, well, we could build a two-story mega restaurant here. With water, oh, with, with water, water features. Water features, yes. This is a small place but it has such an impact on the community. If you now have a beautiful park in the back, there's now a, a wonderful patio where people can eat outside. We're looking forward to a bright future out there on the, the patio and be able to share that with everybody. Well, you know, it's been a great Brock in your block being here at Shea J in Santa Monica. It's close to my heart. I've been coming here for 35 years at least. For Brock in your block, I'm Phil Brock. We'll see you next time. Thank you.